what we can do. Okay. It's both sides now. It's another Monday and you and I are both what scrambling (laughs) to take care of all the things we need to take care of and all the people we need to see. I've had a really busy week with my podcast, uh, Be Inspired. I'm trying to trying to load up all kinds of episodes before I have to learn a new platform. Um, Cause I'm hopeful I don't have yeah. difficulty learning a new platform. So I'm trying to get them in the bank so that I don't have to worry about them. And if I need to take several weeks and find somebody to teach me a thing, I want to feel, I want to feel safe that my podcast continues. But meanwhile, I've had like, I've recorded like six episodes in the past, Ah, in the past five days, and I've got another six coming up in the next five. So it's a really busy time for me and interesting people too. And beyond that, you know, I'm still, and we can talk about this. I'm still um, working with this Sunday afternoon discussion group on C.S. Lewis's The Screwtape Letters. And we have one more set of letters to take a look at. And then And then what I really need to do is develop a portrait of of, uh, the typical person that these demons are trying to to send to hell. You know, like what do we let's summarize what we have to what we have to do to make sure that these people that are client our patients uh, end up going to hell and not you know, being part of the enemies and the enemy, of course, is God. So it's really fascinating. And then I also this week went to a discussion about shamanism. A um, And that was fascinating as well and really connects to this study of the screw tape letters because it's all about spiritual stuff. So what's your week been like? That's mine. You want to talk about that? Uh well, I, I've got some good news for you to start off with. Um, okay. You had mentioned, and we both knew this was happening. Spotify is merging or has been bought or partnering, whatever, with Riverside FM mm-hmm. uh, for their podcast hosting platform and the editing and and, uh, and whatever that you like to do on Spotify, you'll now do on Riverside or or soon we'll do on Riverside. So your good news is that is what you and I use to record. When we record both sides now, I use Riverside FM to do that. So it's not going to be too different from what I'm already using for that. So I'll be able to at least figure out if that's what you're going to go with to do your future episodes uh, once your you know bank gets empty. The other thing is I'm using for radio, a product called Cirrus Streaming, and that also has a recording feature and podcast hosting. I have, I believe, with my membership, multiple podcasts that I can host from it, and maybe that's something you'll want to use also or instead of Riverside. Um, I'm, I'm placing a call to my concierge. I got like my very own customer service guy with this. Wow. And, uh, the, th- the cool thing about Cirrus is that the different levels of membership are not based on features. They're based mm-hmm. on the number of listeners that, uh, we have as a, a platform. It, it's, uh, you know, diff- based on, I'm paying a basic membership now for not as many, you know, listeners and, and, uh, uh, to the radio side and to the podcast side and, and whatever else. And then, um, once that grows, that's when my membership goes up. My membership fee goes up, okay. not with bringing on more features. You gotcha. get everything right out of the gate, which I thought was pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, part of that is I can have other users on my um, on my account. So yeah. if that is something that's going to benefit you by not – you know, going and getting your own Riverside and probably having to pay for that. Uh, you can just jump onto the Cirrus and I know it hosts podcasting cause I've seen it. Um, okay. And I'm thinking of bringing up the middle over to that once, uh, once that goes away. Um, 
But uh, yeah, it's a call I'm going to place to my concierge guy later today uh, and just get some of the basic questions answered. Like, what can I, what can I not do with the, the thing? Because it's the introduction part of it is kind of technical. Like it's geared towards somebody who already knows mm -hmm. this stuff. Uh, yeah. Unlike Spotify, unlike Riverside, unlike Restream, which are very yeah. you know, newbie friendly. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so, yeah, uh, I'll have more information for you by next week. And um, uh, definitely by the time you have to leave Spotify or by the time we both have to leave Spotify, because that's where yeah. uh, both sides now is also hosted. That's where uh, up the middle is hosted. And uh, um, yeah, so that's going to go away. So you'll, be my, so you'll be my concierge is what you're saying. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll be the relay from our actual concierge. There you yeah. Go. Yeah, uh, there you as far go. as how my week went, it's been busy. As you know, you just you just talked to mom for a little bit. They've been here for yeah. a, a week. It's been a week ago tonight that they got here. And it'll be uh, two more weeks till they leave. Dad's helping me with things wow. around the house. Mom's doing some spring cleaning for me. Um, and I'm helping both of them when I'm not sitting here in this chair. So. Well, we um, won't keep you in this chair too long this, because it's important to spend time with mom and dad. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's been good. Um, but we talked about before we started recording too, maybe having either or dad's not too big on. He didn't want to come on the psycho <laughs> and the psychic. It just wasn't his gig. But mom mm -hmm. did for wound up wound up being there the whole show. Um, we promised we wouldn't keep her too long, and before we realized it, we were already over an hour. So. No uh, kidding. That, that turned out pretty good. But uh, yeah. No kidding. Well, your she, dad and uh, I had a great conversation a when you were, when, your dad and I had a great conversation at the studio <clears throat> when you were around for Thanksgiving. And, you know, I think he sort of enjoyed reviewing some of the things about his life that I remembered. And um, maybe we can get him yeah. to do that again. Maybe we can get him to do that again. That would be fun. When, that would yeah, be fun. When, when I was telling mom about um, being a guest on, and I did already tell her that, you know, uh, you and I think you and I talked a couple of weeks ago about uh, having her on here. Um, I had suggested really both of them for be inspired. Absolutely. Um, because for yes. years, mom has been Susie from the Y. Um, yeah. and you know, Catherine of the cheerleading squad back when she was a senior, um, and now she's, you know, active in one of the churches where she knows a lot of the kids through the daycare and mm -hmm. dad, of course, you know, little league baseball, little league football, his oh, own high school yeah. football, uh, and then yeah. his own business that he's now finally kind of sort of starting to retire from. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah, I, I think they'd both be, you know, whether you have them in at the same time and do kind of like a, uh, Oh no, it uh, has one to be one, the other. one at a time. Nah, it has to be one at a time because somebody yeah. always dominates. Yeah. And then uh -huh. you feel bad saying, Hey, shut up for a while. <laughs> so it would be good. <laughs> Plus they go in different directions and there's a lot to explore, yeah. you know, in each of those directions. Right. And so because I try to keep it um, under 30 minutes, uh, and even that's really a, a long time for people's attention spans these days. Um, you know, one at a time would be good if they're willing. Now, the other thing is your dad may not be willing without your mom bringing him along, shall we say. So that may be an issue that we have to talk about. Yeah, I, I, that, that's what I was getting to is that yep. you know, maybe you interview them both on the same day. Yes. And, that, you know, that's one's a in good the other idea. studio while you're talking to the one. Yeah, 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 yeah. So anyway, last time we were on, I think I was talking about gluttony from the screw tape letters. Right. And I remember texting you right at pretty soon after our session and and suggesting that maybe oh, we right. trash that. I felt so uncomfortable because while, you know, while I like to think about what we're doing, you came up with this phrase, positive talk in a negative world. I love that. I just felt that right. I really, in that last week's session, was not the least bit positive, but pretty critical and pretty negative. And I was really uncomfortable about that. And then you know what happened to me? When you said, no, I really like the episode, let's keep it. It's like, uh, okay. 
And then I thought to myself, okay, well, last <laughs> week's episode was both sides now from me. You know, it's like, I'm not just a one-sided person either. I've got, I've got things I don't like. And yeah. I can be negative as I can be as negative as anybody else. And so that's another side of me. So I decided to look at it that way and feel at least at some level of peace <laughs> about the negativity that, you know, kind of that I talked about last week in terms of the people I knew. But, and I kind of felt bad gossiping about them, but yeah, well, <laughs> that's real. But, life, but you know, right? it's the other, the other thing is, like like David said um, a couple times Beckmeyer, when he was yeah. here on Both Sides Now, he said the same thing. David Beckmeyer, yeah. Uh, it's not like the whole anger management and limiting, lowering the temperature. It, it's about lowering the temperature. It's not about shutting it off. Okay. You know, just oh, okay. pick and choose your battles. Okay. And there are going to be things that we're going to be pissed off about. There are going to be some negativity. Yeah. But it's more about bringing those negative issues to the surface and say, here's what's going on. Here's what we've got to deal with, which is, I think, where last week's conversation went yeah, as opposed to, hey, here's some gluttony. How can we make it worse? <laughs> how, can make it, yeah, how can we make it worse in the name of ratings? <laughs> oh, no. Yes. Yeah, I understand how that goes, too. But anyway, so, um, and in the uh, presentation about shamanism, let me start there because it's, a, it's at least something different. Um, and jump in. I don't know if you know anything about it. I don't know much. But this woman whose name is Nancy Omaha Boy because she was married to a Native American. And so her okay. name, of course, her name, of course, reflects that. Anyway, this um, particular session was hosted by a gentleman whom I kind of know, kind of known or have been acquainted with, I guess, for decades. Um, his name is Harry Sirio. And he puts together, he was a reverend, pastor of some kind in some sort of church, but he puts together discussion groups about spirituality, those kinds of things, and offers them in different venues. This one was held in West Lawn. And a friend of mine, Craig, um, put me uh, onto it and said, maybe you'd be interested in some of the sessions that Harry is offering. And the one on shamanism interested me because I am a fan of Native American spirituality. And so I thought, I know nothing about shamanism. Let me go get a taste of what the whole thing was about. But she lived in um, South Dakota with the Lakata uh, tribe for 11 or 12 years and um, talked about the belief systems, their religion, as it were, which is what religions are, talked about their healing ceremonies and about shamanism in in uh in general and suggested that it was the number one religion belief system in the world that apparently um buddhism number one perhaps hinduism number two christianity number three well four actually if shamanism is number one in terms of the number of people who practice uh, whatever it is, the the belief system uh, encouraged by shamanism. And it's been around for thousands of years. She talked about how the other religions, Buddhism particularly, Christianity and, and, and Muslim, are pers they, they, they are um, centered around people, their um, personality. They're centered around a particular personality, Jesus Christ, of course, you know, uh, Buddha, of course, and Muhammad. But shamanism, what shamanism is about, supposedly, is bringing out your own spirit that God is, the great spirit is within, rather than somewhere out there in a person or somewhere out there in the clouds that what 
shamanism tries to do is get connected with the holy a holy spirit inside oneself and so the ceremonies are designed to what block out the noise block out whatever distractions that life provides and you know she made a point of saying that their ceremonies are held at night because daylight is very distracting you can see too many things you know that distract you from the process of getting inside your own self in order to figure out what the messages are for you at that particular time i found it i i just found it absolutely fascinating you know nothing you know you hear about the kingdom of god is within you and all that kind of stuff but they i guess are more serious about it than some other religions who are looking to die and go somewhere or who are finding a spirit right. outside of themselves to worship or to help them uh shamans apparently are all about finding that part of yourself to be able to heal whatever's going on in your life well anyway i found that fascinating and so their ceremonies will include a drum circle for example and this the 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 drumming is designed again to almost i guess it's hypnotized as much as anything you know to get you inside yourself whether it be a drum whether it be a particular herb natural herb you know in terms of um potions i was gonna say is, which, this, um, <clears throat> is this one that does uh, a lot of work with ayahuasca i believe probably or something similar to that but yeah yeah, yeah. in fact it's funny and i hadn't thought to mention this but i don't know um one of my favorite shows uh has been in recent years has been a show called seal team which is about um well okay. seal teams okay and yeah. one of the, it's in its last episode and the major character, his first name is David and I don't know what his last name is, but you look like him. We talked about that very, very thing when I first met you. Anyway, one of the last episodes is he's yeah. David Boreanaz? There you go. Yes. Yes. I love him. I think that's he's the so actor's hot. name. Yes. That's, that's the, the actor's, actor's name. name. Yeah. Yeah. He's so hot. Anyway, um, Angel. Pardon me. I, he he was he his biggest start was uh, Angel, um, a spinoff from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. <laughs> and <laughs> now I think he's one. also on. Yeah, I think he's also. I think that's also him on Bones. Yeah, I met him, quote unquote, on Bones. And then when Bones ended, yeah. he started the series Seal Teams, mm -hmm. which is now ending. But in SEAL Team, okay. he has brain injury, okay, that debilitating, you know, that will get worse and so forth. And as a result of this brain injury, he's been a lot of, a lot, uh, uh, like angry a lot and uh, unhappy a lot and so forth. And so he goes somewhere and experiences the ayahuasca experience. And it's fascinating uh. because, yeah because he developed some self what knowledge and Awareness, changes yeah. and changes him and so yeah so the shamans use whatever it is um potions in order to heal drum circles in order to get in the right space okay um they go into and she talked about Nancy Omaha boy talked about going into the theta, what, not alpha, not beta, not gamma, but theta mindset, which is um, a, a, a significant brainwave that allows you to enter a different kind of intuition, a different kind of world, a different kind of self something. But most interesting for me, and she didn't talk about it at all, but I have got to figure out where to have a conversation with her. She talked about shamanism, like all the other religions, um, deal with dark forces, um, uh, demons, devils, 
that kind of thing. And she said, you know, other religions deal with dark forces in their way. Catholicism has exorcisms in order to right. deal with the dark forces in the universe. But she said at the time, most, you know, we, we don't need to worry about the dark, dark forces today, but I need to explore that a little bit more, particularly since I'm reading the letters, the screw tape letters, which is all about the demons talking to themselves and figuring out how to keep, how to keep people going to hell. Anyway, she also you know, talked I, about, I, and this was, always, go ahead. Hold yeah. on one second. I, I've, yeah, just let me jump in a second. I've actually yeah. often thought about how so many of these, I don't want to say fairy tales, how so many of these fables, um, uh, folklore, mm -hmm. things of those different, you know, um, type, whether it's faith based or, um, uh, passed down the generations based, whatever, how they all come to fruition. And there's always some level of similarity from one culture to another. Yep. who's had no contact with each other whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And it makes me think is, could that mean the possibility that there really are werewolves or mm -hmm. demons mm -hmm. or angels, mm -hmm. you know, just like there's good and bad people in life, there's good and bad angels. The devil was an angel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so it, it just makes me think that there's, where is this similarity coming from? Mm -hmm. If they're not real, if there's not no no uh, realistic or, or no reality to them, and these people have never had any contact, mm -hmm. pyramids. It is. It is. You, you're telling me the Mayans and the Egyptians both figured out to build a pyramid with the precise mm -hmm. construction that they had no capability of doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm with you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The pyramids, the uh, statues on Easter Island all the mazes that you can only see from far up in the sky. The um, yeah. 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 All those, all those, you know, it's fascinating. So as we have talked about before, all this for me is above my pay grade. I don't know anything, but I'm open to everything. One of the final letters in the screw tape letters, for example, we were talking about this yesterday was uh, one of the ways that the demons want to keep you on the path to hell is to convince you that the only things that are, that reality is just what, what you can, what you can touch, hear, taste, smell, and everything else, you know, and, and a lot of times we, we get real when we suffer. Okay. We know that that's real. But when it comes to, you know, appreciating the beautiful, when it comes to feeling, let's say, a high in terms of, you know, all, A-W-E, awe, about what's going on in nature, those feelings are said to be eh, fantasy. You know, they don't really exist. That's not part of reality. Only the tough stuff is real. But the, you know, the, the, the intuitive stuff is not real. The feelings you have, not real. And that's kind of an interesting, I don't know, thing to understand. But one of the other things she talked about, which I think in our regular world with the people that we meet with most of the time, she talks about everything, everything in the world has spirit including rocks, <laughs> including your jacket, that there is spirit involved in every single thing. Now that's, that's tough, I think, for lots of people. I mean, we know that our beloved animals, our dogs have spirit. Nobody can tell me any different. Okay, but a rock, a jacket, anyway. She talked also about that there are some people who are born with a greater sense, who are born with, just like art, artists are born with certain talents, there are people who are born with an ability to read spirits or to be 
more spiritual. So I thought that was, that was, it was something that, you know, I believe don't share it much because it's out of the realm of most people's belief systems, but I enjoyed hearing it. You would actually be, uh, you would actually be a great guest on uh, psycho and the psychic. Probably. Because that's one of the things we talk about off the air is spirituality and, and, you know, as obviously she's a, you know, got psychic ability, she's of the opinion that everybody has psychic ability. It's just the sixth sense in that person. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And everybody and uses people, it differently. If they use it at all. And for some people, it's stronger than others. Just like I, I mm-hmm. confess to having absolutely no artistic ability. Other people have it. They're born with it. It's, you know, they, and they can develop it. It's not something that I, I don't think <laughs> would ever come to me. However, I have other abilities that other people may not have. Um, one of the things in teaching, one of the courses I took in my later, um, in my later years of teaching was about multiple intelligences. And, you know, obviously some people are better at math than others. Some people are better at language than others, but there are also other kinds of intelligences that were suggested as part of this course. And some of them I didn't think of at the time as, um, as um, intelligences that you're born with. But one is the ability to understand yourself. It's an intrapersonal. And there are some people I recognize ever since, I mean, that are able to think about to to think about what they're thinking, okay? Some people do not seem to have that particular ability to go inside themselves and right. figure out what's going on, okay? It's an intrapersonal intelligence. And then there are also interpersonal, I-N-T-E-R, interpersonal intelligence. Some people are better at making friends, at keeping friends, at being personable. Okay. And others are not so much, you know, and we know that today we look at it more today in the popular, in the popular discussions, more popular today than in in the past about the autism spectrum and neurodiversity. And we recognize Mm -hmm. that some people are perhaps not quite as facile about getting along with people and dealing with emotions and so forth. But another one that um, I found interesting in the study of multiple intelligences was called metacognition, thinking about thinking. Okay, how, you know, to analyze how you're thinking about a particular thing. And it's a skill that some people have and some people don't. And it was eye-opening to me to consider that that was a separate skill that some people have and some people don't have so much of. Because I just assumed that people were more like me and they're not always so much so, you know, the, I may have certain abilities or I may have certain strengths in what, in metacognition, in intrapersonal um, abilities that some people, you know, maybe aren't quite as strong in. And so, as you were saying, everybody's different. And um, some people have the sixth sense pretty strongly, like your friend Marcella, your work wife number, whatever. Um, and maybe some people don't have <laughs> it quite so much. <laughs> I like that concept of work wives, by the way. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. anyway, that was part of my week. I, I, and I, I, I wanted to before. share it with you. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Well, I would heard of work wife before and uh, didn't really, eh, whatever. But then I saw it used in the movie Steve Jobs between uh-huh. you know Steve Jobs and um, I forget what her name was, but she was the head of marketing. And, yeah, I uh, can't tell you. Yep. Uh, it was played by the same girl who was in um, Kate Winslet from Titanic. Okay. And I had to watch the movie like two or three times and before I figured out which one was Kate Winslet. I'm like, what Winslet? <laughs> And like, oh my God, it's her. Totally Uh different look. Yeah. 
Yeah, pretty she amazing. changes her looks. But, she um, changes her looks I, pretty I, drastically. Yeah. I I like the fact that um for as much as there is people who don't believe in religion, you know, I for one am not very religious. I am very very much faith based. Mm-hmm. You know, um this was something else Zach and I talked about this past weekend in our moment that we had um, talked about praying and, you know, talked about faith. And I said, just because I don't go to church doesn't mean that I don't follow Jesus or believe in God or pray. And that, that, that came about when um, some of the, his opinion, his interpretation of my opinion of him, inaccurate though it was, um, he thought it was negative. And I had used the explanation. I said, "Some." I said, God answers all prayers. Sometimes the answer is no. Okay. And that kind of offended him because he didn't really think I was a religious person. And I said, just because I don't go to church doesn't mean I'm not into God, Jesus, or our faith. I said, why would I want to go to a place where I'm not welcome? Yeah. And he knew what I was referring to there. Right. And I said, I go to church every day. When I take my walk out to the golf and back, that's a church service for me. Mm-hmm. When I walk the dogs at night, that's a church service for me. For sure. Mm-hmm. And the similarity that everybody has in <clears throat> either a higher power and or their own ability that just seems to come naturally to most people, I think is one way to prove that it exists without having to go to church to learn about it. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> like a COVID mask, um, the dress, the, the, um, the, uh, nightstand by the Apple computer in any of those drawers. That needs so a mask. Or Ross says breathing in something with his, with his family. Who yes. Yes. I have guests as we've mentioned. Yeah. And uh, dad had to poke poke the head in. and um, But yeah, uh, the similarities that happen organically, uh, that happen organically, I I think uh, is one way to prove that the need for them exists and their existence exists. Like the need to have something faith-based or intra-perspective. Mm-hmm. It is something that's needed by humanity and also something that exists in humanity uh, without having to believe the George Carlin interpretation of religion where a man in the sky, you know, loves you and uh, he's angry about everything and whatever else the the skit was. (laughs) Yeah, well, so um, the screw tape letters uh, are... I, I, I'm trying, maybe I've said this before, but I'm trying to put together a portrait, you know, of someone who is destined on his, on his way, you know, to um, join the demons in the underworld. And there are a lot of characteristics I see in people I know, or people I've heard of, or people who come across my my radar through TV or, or whatever. Um, and it's fascinating to talk about some of the things that um, are getting in our way of, you know, connecting with the great spirit within or without, depending on your belief system. But in addition to gluttony that we talked about last week, that need to have things just the way I want them. Okay. Um, it's it's a way of being distracted from 
um, from the feeling of joy, the feelings that are beautiful, in the feelings of, of being present and appreciating and being grateful for where you are at any particular moment. Wishing to be somewhere else, wishing to be somebody else, wishing that your 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 roommate or your companion or your partner or whatever it is looked a different way, talked a different way, rather than focusing on what is beautiful right now. One of the things I found about myself, and I think I've talked about this before, uh, but one of the things that I recognized from reading, I mean, if you put any any uh, faith in, in C.S. Lewis's screw tape letters at all, as far as keeping us from the great spirit, however it is you conceive of it, him, whatever. Uh, one of the things I recognize myself is a sense of arrogance. Like I, for most of my life, for most of my life, figured I've been really blessed, you know, with a lot of different things. I came from a good family. You know, I have good enough health. I have good enough phys physicality. I'm smart enough. I'm talented enough. I'm, I'm, I'm good. Okay. And so I always, and I hesitate to admit to this, but, you know, I always kind of told God, look, there are a lot of people who need you, a lot of people struggling, a lot of people who have way more needs than I do. I'll tell you what, let me take care of me. You go take care of other people. Okay. And I was very, what do you say? Very loath to pray for help because I figured I had enough. What right did I have to ask for more, more comfort, more anything? Okay. And in right. my later years, I figure that's really pretty arrogant and that God needed or the great spirit or, or myself, what I needed in order to grow, in order to be a more perfect me was I needed to go through some pretty serious struggles to the point where you end up on your knees asking for help, begging for help, praying for help. And so I have figured that a lot of things that have happened to me happened to me because they, uh, my spirit needs to be broken. I need to remember that I'm not in charge, that what I have is a gift and my job is to be grateful for the gift and to utilize it for the betterment of myself and whoever, whatever circumstances come my way. So I admit to a bunch of, uh, I, I admit to a lot of arrogance. There you go. <laughs> one of your favorite quotes from Lincoln. Yep. Yep. As uh, we've shown before, I have a uh, file on my desktop uh, that's my screensavers and my rotating desktops. And to uh, go to exactly what Jane was just saying, one of them is from Abraham Lincoln, a quote that's famous from him. I have been driven many times to my knees by the overwhelming conviction that I had nowhere else to go. Essentially, mm -hmm. you know, he was praying because that's the only option he had yes. left. Yep. Been there. Yeah. Certainly been there. Yep. 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 And I, one of the podcasts that I um, conducted or hosted this week was with um, another former student. I forget when he graduated, certainly after you, I believe, but um, you know, he's been, he's, he quit drinking uh, maybe a couple of years ago and just recently was celebrating the anniversary of a day that he decided to get sober. And one of the things I said to him was, and I really mean it. I mean, I really love people. I really appreciate people. I find the beauty of people who have been, who are in recovery, who have been broken totally because they get it that, you know, a lot of what happens to us has nothing to do with what we do for ourselves. I mean, we make choices for sure, but, and the circumstances that follow our choices are ours. We have to own those, but, you know, being aware 
that there are forces in the world that help us, that can help us, that can hinder us. It's really, really important. And people in recovery, I think, recognize more clearly what the beauty, recognize beauty in the world because they have been in such dark places. There you go. That's what I want to say. So much, so many of us take so much for granted, so much for granted. And I think people who have been broken uh, by the use of um, drugs or alcohol or whatever are so grateful for being liberated from that need, at least for one day at a time, you know, constant struggle and all that. But I think they get it. And this particular gentleman, you know, again, one of my former students, now an adult, spent decades in the military, Coast Guard for a while. And then, you know, um, the Army, for, I think either the Army or the Marines for another dozen years or so. But he said, I don't like to use the word recover. I recover. I like to phrase it as I'm moving on, which has a more positive spin to it. And I can appreciate that. Anyway, it was a it was a fascinating conversation again talking with him and recognizing once again how needy we are for whatever help comes our way that we can you know that we can ask Seth somewhere. So that's part of what I did this week, and yep. maybe, maybe, maybe that's enough for this week. I don't know when we started. Yeah, recording. well, question. <laughs> I, I, I've got a, well, we're, we're actually at a 40 minute mark. There you um, go. It felt like but, a class. Uh, <laughs> question, yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, that's why I wanted to make sure I was here on time or close to it because I know yeah. when the bell rings, there I'm you not go. In my seat. <laughs> uh, it's funny how that I time. About, yeah. No, that's all right. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I just that that time, that timing is so much a part of who I am. Once it gets to a particular number of minutes, I get antsy. You know, I can tell when the class is over, it's time to wrap it up. The bell's going to ring any second. It's, it's in my, it's in my physical person. I recognize a certain amount of time has passed, but go, what you're going to talk about is way more important. Oh, <laughs> no, um, my question was, I think, I definitely think there's got to be, you know, folks like um, Amy, Suzanne Bisek, or some of our regular fans that know you and I use these sessions for as much of our own uh, therapeutic conversation as much as it is us creating a podcast. Yep. To what level does that exist, the therapy side? When you record, be inspired. Oh, for me, for that, for for my guest yeah, for, and for myself. For you, oh, I, absolutely. Yeah, I, yeah especially it's, for you because you're there with every episode. Yeah, it's it's great because it it's great therapy for me because it inspires me. It gets me to think about the positive in whoever it is I'm talking to. It gets me to think about what brought them to a particular moment to, to go in a particular direction in their life. It's, it's humbling. It's humbling. And it's humbling because I recognize that so many different people have so many different skills and abilities and inspirations that inspire me. It's like, a, it's for me, for my podcast, it's like attending a sermon attending a church service. It really is. You know, I try to put, yeah. a, I, you know, I try to pull out the best of everything, but I also want to learn from the struggles that people have gone through. And I dance around that pretty, you know, pretty lightly or, and, or before we actually start recording, I will make sure that there's nothing that they don't want to talk about that I shouldn't address but most people are pretty open yeah. and we end up having a good time. It's a celebration. That's what it is. It's a celebration. It's my podcasts are celebrations. Hey, I like that. <laughs> Never thought of it that way. They're little yeah, church services. Cool. Yeah. That's a good place to stop. Don't you think? And, and you know, that's why I, 
I liked, yeah, yeah. That's just a, that's why I liked having you on Sundays and why mm-hmm. I, I made sure you're on Sunday on uh, the Atlanta station is because, yeah, I, I think that is uh, a continuation for those coming home from church or for those who missed it and, and are getting it on the radio. Uh, I, I think that's a, an excellent opportunity for them to be inspired yeah. as well. And so what Ross is talking about is the fact that Be Inspired podcast is broadcast on terrestrial radio in Atlanta and Tampa. Is that right? Uh, right now, just Atlanta. I'm the only okay. one on it that's in Tampa, but that could be okay. changing uh, very soon. Um, and I'm, I'm going to actually be meeting FM. with the owner this week. And it's FM, FM in Tampa. 99. 99- 99.1 yep. in Tampa and available at online at, at that's at 5 p.m. Um, either through 99.1 or through the website. Yep. Mm-hmm. Nine, or, or, what did I just say? Not, no, um, it's 5 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. So mm-hmm. right at the end of the afternoon, right before dinner, right as you're making dinner. Uh, it's, it's how I started listening to be inspired did when you really? I was scheduled. We record with you uh, back last July, that first session. Uh, I said, well, I got to know what this is like. You know, what, what, what is the you know, rhythm and, and, and the itinerary or, or show notes of, of what you do? And so I started listening to, and I know you're going to remember the name because you do every time, uh, The Banker. <laughs> Bill Vitiello. Uh, uh, episode one. Mm-hmm. And I was making dinner. And before I realized that I was binging and uh, listening to episode after episode, and I still That's do. Cool. That's cool. That's cool. Well, I've had some really fascinating episodes this particular week, and I'm looking forward to some more. Um, on s- awesome. Friday, Friday, you'll like this, and I have to send you these files at some point. But Friday, I interviewed my dear friend, Jack Lignelli, and tomorrow- Oh, wow. I, uh, that's my I oral know. surgeon. Mm-hmm. And tomorrow I am scheduled to, I have two scheduled tomorrow. And the first one is with Ralph Borneman. And I have been after okay. him for a long time. So hopefully, hopefully that will go well. And um, then the new owner of um, Long Acre Company that is situated in Bali. The new owner is the Jerry or the to- electric. It's the company, and it includes electric and lots of other things. There are lots of divisions, okay, but the whole company. Okay, mm-hmm. so that's fun. And um, Saturday, Saturday, I did a podcast with again a former student by the name of Aisha Hunter, and she, you know, she's was hmm, she was a mini me. At least that's the way I saw okay. her really enthusiastic and really out there and very verbal and just high energy, that kind of thing. This is mini me when I was teaching, (laughs) not necessarily mini me today, but um, she went into modeling. She is, she, she works with and for QVC and does all kinds of coaching in terms of nutrition and diet and exercise and all that kind of stuff. I mean, she's an absolutely beautiful young woman and she and her, her, she and her daughter do pageants and she's all over Facebook and I just love her. And it was wonderful catching up with her the other day. She graduated in 2006 from Boyertown, a year after I retired or graduated myself. That's the way I look at it. So anyway, yeah, Kido, exactly. I think it's time for you to get back to your family and it's time for me to get on the road. So thank you. All righty. So thank you. What do you got next for the rest of your day? What do I have? What do I have to do the rest of the day? Yeah. What did you say? Um, Yeah. What's up for the rest of my day? Yeah. Yep. The rest of my day includes a meeting with my arts and activities committee, arts and activities Alliance committee. We're meeting just to go over what's going on in town. What's happening. Who do I have to interview next, you know, for my podcast? So that's a meeting at four o'clock. We de- we changed it. We changed the time. This is kind of funny. We changed the time. I- I've been meeting with this, with my group, with my committee 
and it's, you know, it's my advisory council for the, for the Arts and Activities Alliance Studio B. Anyway, we've been meeting for 16 years, the last Monday of every month. Last month, they said, couldn't we meet? At, we've been meeting at noon on the last Monday of the month. And they said, couldn't we meet a little bit later so that we could have a happy hour? So we're meeting at four o'clock today instead of noon. Nice. So I'm and this is the one that always seeing my people. Us. Pardon me? This is the meeting that always pushed. This is the meeting that always pushed yes. us uh, yes. to record yes. later that day. Okay. That is correct. So it works out that way. Hopefully, hopefully people will be able to come at four o'clock, but I think it's a great yeah. change and it allows me not to have to interrupt our sessions. So anyway, thank We're you for at, listening, people. We got, a, we got to plug, we got to plug your location. We got to plug oh. the location. Where, where's your meeting at? Okay. Well, the meeting is at Studio B, 39A East Philadelphia oh. Avenue in Boyertown, Pennsylvania. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. where we're meeting. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. so the bar That's, at Studio B. Yeah. There are adult beverages in the fridge. <laughs> always. 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 Yes. There's always something. All there's of those even a bottle of, have there's, of there's even a bottle of rum somewhere in the studio. Oh, nice. I'll be right there. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> anyway, you have a happy time <laughs> with your folks. Um, you too. you want to talk about Or you have a happy time with your meeting. Yeah, thank you very much. And you can find Be Inspired on your favorite podcast platform. And um, we are looking for, we had the best time the other day meeting with the gentleman for our next show at Studio B that I'll talk about more maybe next time, but it's titled The Full Monty. And there were awesome. over a dozen gentlemen in the studio the other day with, we took their photo. Uh, with a piece of their artwork at the appropriate location. So it was good. And we did a short, <laughs> very brief, very brief podcast episode introducing each of them to allow us to help promote our next show that opens April the 20 something, the last Friday in April, whatever that is, 26 something. I can't remember. Anyway, yeah, the 26th, the 26th of April, the Full Monty at Studio B in Boyertown. Yeah. Anyway, this Very is Both cool. Sides Now, and I'm Jane Stahl. And I'm Jurgs. And we'll catch you next week. Thanks for coming, everybody. Bye.